Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of First Impressions here at Marauder. I'm Matt, and today we're checking out the open access of Unexplored 2, The Wayfarer's Legacy, which was just announced at the PC Gaming Showcase at E3 on uh, Monday of this week. So I jumped into this yesterday, full disclosure, and recorded one of these for you guys, and then I deleted it because it felt buggy or broken or I didn't understand it, whatever you want to say. It is what it is. I had it done. I mean, I was uploading it. I thought it was fine. I thought it was going to be a fair upload of the demo. And then I thought, you know what? It's open access. I don't want to completely misrepresent this game and just shit on it if it's not fair uh, to the developers and what they've created. Obviously, I want these to be earnest. That doesn't always mean that they'll be good. But when something's in like full open access at version 0.14.2, like this is, um, you know, it's too early to give it any kind of like true, true review, as is the case for this video. However, you can still look at the gameplay mechanics, the art, what they've presented to you. They give you access to this by pre-ordering a game. That's like sort of one of the incentives. And I think that's important to consider it because that will entice some people to think, Ooh, I can get early access and I want, I want to let you know if it's worth spending your like, you know, 25 bucks on. So here we are. I want to check this one out. Now notice it says this is a very early build demo. Don't expect a polished smooth experience. However, uh, this is a taste of what the game will become. There are three saves, three worlds you can't save on your own. So you just kind of get three little tastes. They drop you in and you play. And then a more polished demo is coming later. With that said, the reason I decided to return to this is because they actually sent an email saying, you know what, here's some stuff that you should know uh, when you hop into the demo. Excuse the music cutting out, but I'm going to move my OBS so I can read a little bit. Um, but what it says is the first tip is right at the beginning of the demo after the first conversation run to the right uh and exit the level which that is a problem i was having you're gonna see it as soon as we jump in you you spawn in and then enemies just spawn around you and you have little to no chance i tried to fight i beat them one out of like four times and the thing i recorded before we're gonna take a look today to see if that helps it says you probably won't survive the first fight so it's better to run which by the way is always a serious option in combat it's a roguelite and that's fair but you know you're used to wanting you know to wanting to fight in a game you know you do have to weigh your options like resident evil it's, but it's not a survival horror game so <clears throat> it says combat in unexplored 2 is all about timing and positioning when you get into a bad flow you can be defeated quickly so you should approach enemies with care even then many encounters are designed to be overwhelming so you should always carefully assess whether fighting is worth the risk remember this is a game with permadeath and sparse access to heal sparse access to healing so you should always ask yourself if the engagement's worth it surviving combat starts with good defense you can use shields to block melee and ranged attacks and to use your shield you need to right click Swords and daggers can be used to parry melee attacks. You do not need to press a button to parry. You simply need to face the attacker. However, once you parried with a particular weapon, you can't use the same weapon to parry again for a while. So you can't just sit there and spam the weapon. That's helpful to know as well. So I don't want to sit here and read the whole email to you, but there are a host of instructions. And I do want to jump in to figure out what's going to happen based on these updates. So when the equipped weapon, when you have it, you can left click to use it. You can attack as often as you like, but keep in mind enemy, uh, keep in mind that attacking makes you vulnerable. You're opened up as you swing. The demo has a different uh, host of weapons, which include swords, daggers, axe, spears, javelins, clubs, and bows. So you can have three javelins for a few volleys before switching to a sidearm such as a sword or axe. I noticed that as well. I was trying to spam throw and then I would just run out. That was a mechanic that was unclear. And again, I'll try to show you all this. You can also travel. You walk toward a map exit, and then you pick where you go. You'll see a branch once we get in here. I don't want to just read all this to you, but they do send a nice email that gives you, like, all the different options as you enter the game. So here we are, walking around, and you can see it has a nice art style. You've got this over the top. I'm moving with my WASD, looking with my mouse. Now, I did notice there seemed to be some dead spaces or drop frames, if you notice. You kind of get stuck sometimes while rotating, which can cause you some combat problems. <coughs> so you swing with your normal left click, and you have a shield with right. And you see down here in the bottom, you have a host of weapons, which you can cycle through with your one, two, and three. But that actually just seems to change your secondary weapon. So I've got my staff. I've got this here sword, which I can use to parry. Or I've got my shield, which can just block damage. Now, they mentioned as soon as you talk, run. And that's exactly what we're going to do. <coughs> so we've been given, excuse me, an urgent mission. Imperials found us. They want the staff, but they cannot have it. What do I do? You must take it and bring it to safety. I marked the location of the spirit portal on your map. Take it there. 
And we run, because look, you'll see enemies spawn right in this area. And they're fast, and they can get you. So they got me anyway, even though I'm trying to WASD my way out of the map. Also, you notice you have to hit E to exit. You can't just run out of the map, which is fair, because if you were caught up in combat, you wouldn't want to just suddenly be relocated to a new area. So we're standing here. This is the demo start. He mentioned he put the portal on my map of where I can exit out. I don't actually see that. But I do just want to explore what's around me. So we have noticed an opportunity and an enemy here in the field. They show you all these different levels of threats over here on the left side under the different levels. So this one has a mystery and an opportunity. Maybe no enemies. Maybe we should see what the mystery is at the standing stone. So let's check that one out. Now I do like that similarly to like a Slay the Spire, you can kind of choose your path and see what kind of rewards you get. I'm just not sure where the example was of uh, the spirit portal that the man mentioned to me. So over here, it's a muck muck. I was told they roam the region. Some tribes are more civilized than others believe, but I'm pretty sure it'll believe we're trespassing. So I guess I don't want to be seen by that. <coughs> that was definitely a strong hint. You don't want to be seen. Now notice this kind of like flat 2D top down isometric like cell shaded view. Um, I, I like the art in the game. I'm excited to see the, the variability in that as you press onward. Um, the game all but told me not to engage here, so I'm not going to. <coughs> and that's like a midpoint there as we move along. I'm not sure what this thing is that's chasing us. Now notice time is changing as well. It seems to be later in the day as we enter this new area. So I just consumed a packet of food. One packet will last me for a day. I have to keep track of my stocks. I don't want to starve to death. Let's keep an eye out for prey animals uh, and berry filled shrubs because you need food to be able to move from one place to the other. If anyone has played Void Bastards, it works similarly. You have to have food rations, which allow you to venture further along the map. Otherwise, you take health decreases as you go between. I'm not sure what happens in this game if you run. I don't know if you run out of food. I don't know if you just die or you enter the map with uh, lesser health. Sometimes parts of the world are not fully formed, creating these monoliths. Studying them provides novel insights on the world and its connections with the spirit world. If I can afford to, it'd be wise to study it. I'm not sure what will limit you. Oops. <laughs> okay, we have an exposition traveler line start. Hopefully it's something nice. He seems friendly. And we'll investigate this monolith. Now. Fortune test mental. Three rounds. The standing stone clearly does not originate from this environment. Why is somebody erected it here? <laughs> erected. Uh, you don't know. Intricate markings are delicately carved into its surface. I can either admire it from afar, or I can trace the markings, which have possible effects of gaining benefit or losing time. I'm going to do both. <coughs> so we got sparks. Draw one more before deciding what to do. Ooh, bad feelings. I'm going to do one more. Lose time. Okay, I think it's time to be done. Okay, I guess I can just escape to be done. And it said it's a good place to set up camp. <coughs> well, apparently not. It just made me whistle. Okay. Guess we'll push on here. Okay. Now, these three areas converge. I can either keep pushing forward. Again, I don't see what the, where the portal was. Also notice food is low. I think I probably should have tried to forage more in that level. 78 league. Are we to believe that's the spirit portal? 78 leagues. It's the only thing with a giant pushing arrow on it. Look at the size of the map. Now, I'm not sure when the final game comes out how much you'll want to adventure on one life. And I'm not sure how the different saves will connect to each other. That's something that remains to be seen. But for now, I guess we just push toward the winding road. Only because this one seems to backtrack and anything that seems like progress seems to be in this direction. I'll say so far it feels like they've dialed back enemies. However, we ha also, I guess, haven't actually fought anything yet. So I guess it will remain to be seen how much the combat itself has changed. Uh-oh. Are you good or bad? <laughs> you blocked my path, so... Seems like you're bad. Hello. Can I talk to you? Okay, so they didn't require me to hit them, which is good. Now they seem to be following me. 
Okay, not sure if they're my friends now. They seem to be following me around like lemmings. That'd be interesting if in this game you can kind of build up an army. Also notice the stuttering frames. I actually dropped my frame rate, um, or excuse me, dropped my quality down from very high to just medium. Um, but that is that is in-game if you're seeing it on the stream. So, or excuse me, in uh, the video. Apologies for that if that's the case. Um, but that's it's not my PC. It, it should be able to run a game like this. All right, and we have an enemy on this one. That's what we want to see, some combat, right? And again, remember, this is just one of the three scenarios I've set up, which as far as I can tell, doesn't really give you much map variety so much as uh, variety in weapons themselves and of your hero. Ordinary Imperial soldiers are usually not well informed. Sometimes it is possible to bluff to get past them. <coughs> I should stay out of sight of Imperials and their cronies if I want to slip by them. Oh, well, he's made up his mind. God, he's got much stronger. He's stronger than me. Oh my god. I just want to just fucking run. Nope, they got me. So you can see how quickly you get swarmed. The combat, I mean, like, I faced that guy, but his weapon was longer than mine. I didn't have any means to beat him. But that's fair enough. <coughs> we'll do the same thing again, only because the other scenarios have weapons. Uh, I'll show them to you. Um, but weapons that I'm not as comfortable using. And the other reason I'm comfortable with actually sprinting right now is because, uh, that's actually what cost us some of our health in the last one, our hesitation to do so. So let's go to this mystery and a hazard on this, on, on this particular go here. Just traveling along our road here. And this time we have rats. I don't know if that's the hazard, but no problem. I wish there was a dodge roll. That's something else I will say about this game. I don't like that your only options are shield or not shield. I wonder, can you use them? Okay, that one ran away. So if you leave tracks, it increases the chances that enemies can find you. However, there are none on this map, so I'm not too, too worried about it. Notice also there's not random generation of maps. It seems like in this case, we're going down the same route we went before. Uh, and we saw the same layout. All right. We're going to try to journey onward. Another thing I want to note. If you start trying to move a direction you're not facing, notice it's slower. However, the second I hit the arrow for the direction you're facing, you sprint. So there is times where you'll slow down because it's time to like turn north of a way your mouse was already facing. And then you randomly slow down. So you want to make sure that you're always facing the cardinal direction that your mouth 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 mouse is going otherwise you'll start walking like that and you don't want to have that happen so see like if i took this bend and i hit a left arrow i'm kind of sidestepping whereas if i actually want to run straight to the right i need to move the mouse down in order to move quickly in that direction so here we are we've quickly made up our ground back to where we were before we're back to the winding road <coughs> Which I have no problem with. However, we're down to two food and we haven't been able to forage anything despite killing rats. Still not entirely sure what your options are for food sources. This is right where we died last time. It's not a monolith apparently, so there's nothing to capture here. Perhaps we can find food at these turkey statues? Nope. I do want to explore this map a little more since it's one that we died on last time. I don't remember seeing if there were enemies or not. Nope. <laughs> Those are all of our exits. I don't know if there's a map to be seen in game right now if you hit escape you're kind of just getting the basics because again this is fully unfinished <coughs> yep i don't think we want any of those i think we want to go south since that was the direction we were hoping to go to press towards the spirit portal it does feel like they dialed back the number of enemies by the way which is adding additional elements to consider however there's not a lot of food yet so something with food would be great i'm going to interpret opportunity and prey as food options and that's the direction we're going to go for this next map i'm also interested to see now that we've run out of zero food or run down to zero food notice that's happened but ooh, i like this like boggy swamp it's nighttime it's the first time it feels different also we have a status effect now called wet not sure what that means the deeper water also not sure what happens there apparently nothing <coughs> excuse me i will get over this cold one day so far the wet the only thing i can tell about it is that i move more slowly ah shit gonna filter me up to these enemies but you know what i think it's time we face them oh i can talk to them so it says we are looking for somebody calling himself the wayfarer you wouldn't have to know anything about that person would, would you 
Greet and start a conversation. The Imperials look like they mean business. Better not tell them who you are. I can draw... Okay, so failure is combat. Draw one more fortune. Critical of their presence. Didn't work. Oh, play along. I will tell you. Okay, I guess that engagement worked. You're not mad at me, are you? No, they don't seem mad. Okay, so we talked ourselves out of combat. That's something I wasn't I didn't know was gonna become a part of the game. Better get away before they realize that I've outsmarted them. However, they, they did have mention of prey in this map. And I don't think we can afford actually to go on without it. I hear a frog or something. Can I cut my way through this? No. Perhaps the prey is this way. How about these fish? There's one. It highlights the things you can kill. That's valuable to me. God, moving this slow is annoying. There we go. Got two total food. So we should be able to venture on a bit further now. Notice you can also hit shift to tighten your screen up if you want to be able to see a little bit better. For tighter combat engagements, which is actually pretty cool. I also think I'm going to press back forward in this direction that we had originally come from. Uh, in an effort to... Again, try to follow the path toward the spirit portal, which I'm not entirely sure of the location of on the map. We can give it another quick glance as we press on to a new node up here. Let's just see what we've got in that department. So you can see the game has introduced a lot of mechanics. It is not just a solely like combat focused roguelite. We've made it to our destination, which I guess this is where Prey should officially be, because that was actually sort of like a middle ground. Large trees. I'm not sure if pressing out into fields will ever lead to any bounties, but I sure as hell want to find out. I'm very sorry if the stuttering frames make you want to throw up on yourself. Um, I imagine that's something they'll get worked out. But again, I tried to drop the quality of the content in the game in the hopes I would help it uh, stream a little bit better. But again, it's not my PC. It's the game itself as of now. Barbed uh, thicket gates. A spirit controls them. When they're closed, you can try to negotiate with the spirit to gain passage, but be careful. Sometimes they're aggressive and strike anybody <coughs> with a root attack. Well, I'm going to try. So there are hostiles nearby, so it won't let me. <coughs> Where are the hostiles? Perhaps they were on the other side. So I had issues with the combat in the initial version and they've certainly dialed it down. That said, they might've dialed it down too much. Like I wanna I wanna have a little bit more uh, engaging combat, maybe just fewer enemies at a time. Seems to suffer from the problem that Dark Souls 2 did, which is to say like it made the number of enemies the difficulty rather than the combat engagements themselves. And I'm hoping that won't always be the case. All right, we need an animal for sure. Hopefully we can find some wolves or fish. I keep trying to run with sprint. Wolves are pack hunters, but they're cowardly. So if you show force, maybe you can get them to back off, and that's going to be our strategy. We're going in to try to beat the biggest guy in the schoolyard. Get out of here. Get out of here. Do you give me food, though? They're all dead. They couldn't get away. Covering your tracks. We did it. All right. So hopefully enemies and other prey, or excuse me, predators won't find us but i was hoping to find some kind of food source no luck again sorry for the zooming in i keep trying to use sprint but again it's just about lining up your path i feel the overworld uh map definitely still feels a little bit bare bones i'm very excited to see like what these little animations will look like rather than just like strange polygon block toys that look like they're meant for a toddler um but again, totally assuming those are placeholders. So while I am saying I want more combat, I will say compared to the initial version of this before they had me just run away, I, I the combat was difficult and I didn't even get into the other details of this game, which is nice. The, the search for food, the risk reward, the negotiation systems, finding experience in a strange golden orb on the ground, um, deciding on the map which ways you want to go. That level of variance has made it a much more enjoyable experience. So it's really great they sent that update update around to people. But again, want a little more combat. What's up, brother? <coughs> I got combat for talking to him. And this 
this one has a dialogue tree associated with him. Hello there, juicy, a uh, piece of juicy, but otherwise irrelevant gossip. Oh, uh, well, I, hopefully they'll spell that right next time and actually fill it in. But thank you, sir, traveler, for not trying to kill me. <laughs> We're going into the woods, baby. Opportunity and cover, opportunity and cover. Everything a man could want. All right, going real slow with our walking stick this time. <clears throat> you can go further than I would have imagined with just these three saves. Guys, we're out of food though. I stumbled in here. There are some lily pads. We're gonna have to show force again. Scare these damn wolves away. I'm not sure if once they flee, they'll come back at you once they regain their composure or not. Um, Guys, we're, we are gotta be losing health because of our lack of food. It looks like we have a little health missing down here by this strange bar. Is there a stamina bar, by the way, or what is the yellow? We don't know yet. It's still nothing and no food yet. Okay. The Imperial Hunter lost track. I guess I was being tracked. I am starving, so I did take a chunk of health. So that answers my questions about that mechanic. I would kill to find some food in this woods. I'm not sure. They mentioned berries, but I don't see any. I haven't seen any food. We have another, like, briar patch here. Ooh, and rabbits are on the other side. Please let me through. Please? <laughs> Was this him? Negotiate with the spirits. We're going to draw one more time. Well, things are looking bad. Can I kill you? So I killed it, but I think that might have limited my ability to get through and therefore to get to food. Maybe this one will let me through. I did not kill your friend. Can I go through this? I can. Come here, rabbits. Food! We're not gonna die today, gents. Hopefully the gods of the forest don't look down on me for murdering the rabbits. We're gonna negotiate again, and we're gonna open the gate. Negotiating has worked. Now, I'm not sure if, if you can, like, increase your negotiation power by gaining sparks, but I do know I don't accidentally want to kill this Zelda eye. Ooh, tons of experience, right? Not sure what experience does. Ooh, but those heal me too. This has been a beneficial forest because that's the first healing item we've come across in our playthrough so far. Uh, excuse me, do I have to negotiate to leave? <coughs> Don't look at me. May I leave? Youch! Could you open please? I'm tracked. I'm trapped. Open gate. Done. Now, I don't know what happens if you can't successfully negotiate there. I guess I just imagine that eventually you can. So we had been healed, then took damage from the evil gate. Fuck you very much. We're leaving. <coughs> now, I know that we've passed our normal amount of time here for one of my first impressions videos, but I'm having a good time. I'm kind of curious what the 33 leagues are. At the very least, I want to die to wrap up this video. It is a roguelite after all. That's what it's all about. So I figure we'll press on. And again, I'm not even sure if 33 leagues is where I'm supposed to be going, but it's the clearest, uh, most flashy indicated thing on the entire map that I can tell. If a dev stops by in the video or anybody has an idea, please let me know in the comments uh, where you're supposed to be working your way to. Careful, that is a snap root tree. These trees have a sensor root uh, somewhere. Getting to clo uh, getting too close to it. There's a lot of typos here. Somewhere should be one where getting too close to it. It should have two O's. Uh, will cause it to attack. When roused, these trees might even attack everything it perceives as an enemy. Moving cautiously might allow me to spot the sensor and avoid taking damage. Or we could just go around. Thick woods. Being hunted. 
I am a little curious though about the about the sensors. Oh shit balls. What's up? Why? I'm looking the wrong way. Oh <laughs> that might have been a little bit of a of a self-fulfilling prophecy. I said I wanted to die and I did. Well guys, I'd say they fixed up a lot of the stuff in this so far. Now, I did mention I don't want to read through the whole thing for you, but I figure if you're here and interested in this and you haven't seen the email for some reason, hang out with me here out the rest of this video. I'll kind of walk you through some of the other tips they have uh, in that email. If you're if you're done, fine. Sign off, close the video. We loved having you here. And uh, you know what? We'll see you uh, in the next one. Hit like if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want to see more. Um, but anyway, they added some things. Visibility is increased when you're spotted by certain enemies. When you make a fire or when you leave uh, a fire burning through the night. When your visibility is high, most hunters know where you are and where you're going, making it easy for them to find you. So when you're traveling to covered locations, you can reduce your visibility. So I guess that actually influences how many enemies are hunting you on the screen. There's also spores which tell, uh, indicate the tracks left during your travel. Starting fights, going through certain types of terrain can increase your spore. When it's too high, enemies track you easily, boosting their travel speed reduce your spore cover your tracks hearsay is increased when you talk to neutral characters especially when you boast about your status or flaunt the staff of yendor many hunters also talk to locals leaving uh, i assume that means leading to a lot of rumors uh, presence is when you abuse this you abuse the staff for some of the special powers which we didn't even dive into um we went into the whole thing about uh going with the fortune tests that's when you're like negotiating with items um, it's a dice roll, they say, and it's almost always optional. You get to draw on a number of fortunes from a pool of possible outcome. So, after you draw a fortune, you can choose to keep it or spend a spark to draw another option. So that's your re-roll. So you want to have, you want to find sparks because they're a finite resource um, that let you re-roll the outcomes of those different engagements, which we did plenty of times. So that's how it works. Magic is another important role, something we did not dive into, so that must be what the yellow bar is. When you wield a magic item, you attune it to the uh, right type of source. You can power it by stepping close, and once powered, you can use its magic. Again, we didn't go into that. So they, do, they did also release a video. So if you guys were an early uh, investor on FIG in order to get access to the Unexplored 2 Wayfarer's Le Legacy demo, then you should have access to both this open access uh, sort of demo, which again is the way too early sort of demo. And they've emailed you this update, so if you're interested, check the email that you registered with. Uh, it was a little difficult to get this, by the way, if you're not used to the Discord store. Uh, they have a button on the Fig store where you can go in, hit link to your Discord channel, and then when you go in, at the top of the left panel, you'll see uh, a spot in the Discord channel where you can actually, um, under your like Big Sugar channel, on the top left is the Unexplored to Open Access Beta, where you can actually download and gain access uh, to this demo. Um, so again, if you need any help with that, that's why uh, that's where you can find that. Uh, however, final thoughts. I like it. The bones are there. It's not perfect yet. It's too early, honestly, to even give you a full on review <laughs> to say whether I do or don't like it. Just because some of the things I don't like, I, I, I can't say whether they're just like that because it's not polished. I don't want to make that assumption. But at the same time, going off what's there for me, combat doesn't feel tight enough yet. I don't think the controls are tight enough yet. There's dead spots in your rotations. It's not always clear which direction you're facing. You saw that's actually how I died in the last engagement. So I think they need to tighten up some of those things. But the mechanics of the game itself, I think, are awesome, as is the art. So I think the bones are there and the things that I have problems with right now can be fixed. Uh, but for now, if you want to know if you should pay the 25 bucks uh, and get in on the ground floor just to have access to this demo because you want something new to play, I'd say that's not cause enough to do it yet. Maybe hold on, wait until a more full demo is out and see how that one's looking and you can jump in and invest then. I'll probably be doing continued first impressions of this as it moves along through the cycle. So we'll check it out again when a full on demo is out and then of course when the final version of the game comes out. I'll be releasing first impressions videos right here at Marauder. So, uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please hit the like button. If you want to see those upcoming videos, both about Unexplored 2 or all the other Let's Plays and reviews I have going on at the channel, hit subscribe. We'd love to have you around for those future videos. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again next time.